Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of Louisiana Creole Folklore by Alcy Fortier. The first story is about Brother Rabbit and Madame Buzzard, who wasn't always bald. The second story is a bit more gruesome about Brother Rabbit not understanding about birds sleeping with their heads under their wings. And finally, the third story is about Brother Hyena. Brother Hyena lets the monkeys know the secret to when food is finished cooking. Okay, let's begin. Brother Rabbit and Madam Buzzard Do you know why all buzzards are bald? No? Well, I'm going to tell you. Once upon a time, Madam Buzzard was sitting upon her nest in an old oak tree. Her husband was a good-for-nothing fellow, and she was always starving. At the foot of the tree there was a big hole in which Rabbit dwelt. Brother Rabbit was large and fat, and every time Madam Buzzard saw him, she wished to eat him. One day, while Brother Rabbit was sleeping, she took some moss and bricks and closed the hole in the tree. Then, Brother Rabbit would not be able to get out and would die of hunger. When Brother Rabbit woke up and he found out that he was shut up in the hole, he begged Madam Buzzard to let him out, but she replied each time, I am hungry, and I must eat the flesh on your bones. When Brother Rabbit saw it was of no use to beg, he stopped speaking. But Madam Buzzard was so glad that she had caught Brother Rabbit that she licked her lips when she thought of the good dinner she would make. As she did not hear Brother Rabbit move, she thought he was dead and smothered, and so she took away the moss and bricks which closed the hole. She began to go down into the opening, but Brother Rabbit made one jump up and got out. When he was at some distance, he said, You see, it is you who are caught, and not I. He ran away and went to stay at the house of one of his friends, because he was afraid to go back into Madam Buzzard's oak tree. Some days later, Madam Buzzard, who had forgotten about Brother Rabbit, went to take a walk with her children, who had all come out of their shells. They passed near the house of Brother Rabbit's friend. Brother Rabbit was glad, and he thought about how he could take revenge on Madam Buzzard. He ran into the kitchen, took a large tin pan full of burning embers and hot ashes, and when Madam Buzzard and her children passed near the gallery, he threw down on them all that he had in the tin pan in order to burn them. But you know that buzzards have thick feathers except for on the top of their heads. They shook off the embers and ashes, but not quick enough to prevent their feathers on their heads from being burned down to the skin. That is why buzzards are bald, and never eat the bones of rabbits. The End Okay, story number two, Brother Rabbit and Mr. Turkey. Every evening when Brother Rabbit returned from his work, he passed through a yard where there was a large turkey sleeping on its perch, and like all other turkeys, that one also had its head under its wing to sleep. Every evening Brother Rabbit stopped to look at the turkey, and he asked himself what it had done with its head. Finally, one evening, he was so curious that he stopped underneath the perch and said, Good evening, Mr. Turkey. Good evening, said the turkey, without raising its head. Do you have a head, Mr. Turkey? Yes, I have a head. Where is it? My head is here. Brother Rabbit looked in vain, but he could not see Mr. Turkey's head. As he saw that the turkey did not want to talk to him or show where his head was, he went to his house and said to his sister, Do you know that to go to sleep turkeys take off their heads? Well, I believe I shall do the same thing, because it is less trouble to sleep without a head, and one can speak without a head, for the turkey spoke to me. Before his sister had the time to tell him anything, he took out an axe and cut off his own head. His sister tried in every possible way to stick it on again, but could not do so, as her brother had killed himself. The End
Okay, and story number three, Brother Hyena and the Monkeys. Brother Hyena put a fire under his kettle, and when the water was very hot, he began to beat his drum and to cry out, Sa ta bombel, sa ta bombel, sam bombentan, sam bombel, sam bombentam. The monkeys heard and said, What? Hyena has something good to eat. Let us go. And they ran up to Hyena and sang, Molesi, Cheguene, Charavon, Cheguele, Charavon. Brother Hyena then said to the monkeys, I shall enter into the kettle, and when I say I am cooked, you must take me out. He jumped into the kettle, and the monkeys pulled him out as soon as he said, I am cooked. The monkeys in their turn jumped into the kettle and cried out immediately on touching the water, We are cooked! Hyena, however, took his big blanket and covering the kettle said, If you were cooked, you could not say so. One little monkey alone escaped, and Hyena ate all the others. Sometime after this, Brother Hyena was hungry again, and he called the monkeys, Sam Bombel, Sam Bombel Tarn, Sam Bombel. When the monkeys came, he jumped into the kettle again and said, I am cooked, I am cooked. The monkeys, however, which had been warned by the little monkey which had escaped the first time, did not pull Hyena out, but said, If you were cooked, you could not say so. The End I love in the first story how Madame Vulture tried to trap Brother Rabbit, but ended up getting something much worse. It's never a good idea to try to trick Brother Rabbit. In the second story, I didn't like how Brother Rabbit unalived himself. It was a bit gruesome. But not all folklore is written for kids. Sometimes Dizzy has us fooled into thinking that folklore is always safe for kids. It's not always written with kids in mind. And in the third story, I liked how Brother Hyena tricked the monkeys. But in the end, the monkeys tricked him back. I had a bit of trouble with the song and with the things the monkeys said. I asked some French and Creole speakers what it might mean, but they were unable to give me any solid translation of the words. They said it's probably not French. It's just written down in French accents. So, oh well. All in all, a fun set of stories. And the podcast shout out is to It's Probably Not Aliens. In their words... Every week, historian Tristan Johnson and regular human person Scott Nicewander dive through the archives to learn about the fascinating histories of ancient civilizations, while also debunking the myths and straight-up lies presented in the History Channel's massively popular TV show, Ancient Aliens, that has sparked a new generation of conspiracy theorists. I really appreciate this podcast because the ancient aliens thing just drives me crazy. Well, I don't know what it is, so it must be aliens. Well... We're not exactly sure, so aliens. It's a really terrible, terrible way to go through the world. And it really discounts the local people who have made things over the years that these guys just go, well, that's confusing. So if you like the podcast as much as I do, give them a rating, a review, a follow, a listen, all that good stuff. And the listener shout out is to Beirut, Lebanon, the largest city in Lebanon with a population of around 2.5 million people. The name probably goes back to an old Phoenician word meaning wells, as the water table is easily accessible there. The city has been governed by Phoenicians, Greeks, Romans, Arabs, Crusaders, Ottomans, the French, and finally back into the hands of the Lebanese. It is a beautiful city on the Mediterranean Sea, and of course, I would love to visit there someday. To my listener from Beirut, I say, Alef shukran wa tisbarakhir. Thank you. Good night.